Southwest Airlines Flight 1380 Southwest Airlines Flight 1380 was a flight from New York's LaGuardia Airport to Dallas Love Field in Texas. It was a Boeing 737 aircraft carrying 144 passengers and 5 crew members, making a total of 149 people on board. The flight was meant to be a normal trip connecting two busy U.S. cities. But about 20 minutes after takeoff, while flying at around 32,000 feet over Pennsylvania, something went terribly wrong. One of the engine's fan blades broke off due to metal fatigue, which caused the engine to come apart. Pieces of it hit the plane's body and broke a window. This caused the cabin to lose pressure instantly. Sadly, one passenger sitting near the broken window was partially pulled out and didn't survive. The pilots quickly began an emergency descent and managed to safely land the plane in Philadelphia. Eight other passengers had minor injuries, but thanks to the crew's fast actions, the rest made it out safely. An investigation by the National Transportation Safety Board found that the engine failure was caused by a crack in one of the fan blades and developed over time. This led to a chain reaction that the engine wasn't built to contain. After the incident, officials called for better inspection rules for this type of engine and changes in the design to help prevent this kind of failure in the future. United Airlines Flight 553 United Airlines Flight 553 was a flight from Washington National Airport to Omaha, Nebraska, with a planned stop in Chicago at Midway Airport. The plane was a Boeing 737 and had been flying for about four years. On December 8, 1972, there were 55 passengers and six crew members on board, 61 people in total. As the flight approached Chicago, the weather was not ideal. There was fog and light rain, making it hard to see clearly. The crew was told to follow a non-precision approach to runway 31L. That means they had to manually monitor their altitude without the help of some automatic landing tools. They were instructed to stay at 2,000 feet until they passed a point called the outer marker, and only then could they continue descending. But when the plane reached the outer marker, it was still flying too high. To quickly correct this, the captain deployed the spoilers and panels on the wings that helped slow the plane down and increase the descent rate. When they reached the proper low altitude, the captain added power to level off, but the spoilers were still out, and that created extra drag. The plane lost too much speed and stalled. It crashed about one and a half miles from the runway, hitting trees and several homes. Five houses were destroyed and three more were damaged. Tragically, 43 people on the plane died, along with two people on the ground. The NTSB investigated and found that the main cause of the crash was the captain not managing the descent properly. The crew also didn't follow standard procedures and communication in the cockpit wasn't strong enough during the landing approach. Lion Air Flight 610 Lion Air Flight 610 was a regular domestic flight in Indonesia. It was supposed to fly from Jakarta Sokarno Hara Airport in Pangkal, Penang, a city on Bangka Island known for its tin mining and beaches. The plane was a Boeing 737 MAX 8, a brand new aircraft that had been delivered just a few months earlier. On board were 181 passengers and 8 crew members. Sadly, on October 29, 2018, just 13 minutes after takeoff, the plane crashed into the Java Sea. Before the crash, the pilots reported having trouble with the controls and asked to return to Jakarta. But soon after, communication was lost, and the aircraft suddenly plunged into the sea. People working on a nearby oil platform said they saw the plane nosediving at high speed. The investigation showed that the main cause was a faulty system called MCAS, which was designed to automatically adjust the plane's nose during flight. It kept pushing the nose down because it was getting the wrong data from a broken angle of attack sensor. The pilots weren't told much about this system and didn't have the training to deal with it. On top of that, the sensor had been installed incorrectly during maintenance, which made things worse. Ethiopian Airlines Flight 302 Ethiopian Airlines Flight 302 was supposed to be a normal international flight from Addis Ababa, Ethiopia to Nairobi, Kenya. It was flown by a Boeing 737 MAX 8, a fairly new plane that had just been delivered to the airline a few months earlier in November 2018. On board were 149 passengers and 8 crew members. Some of the passengers were on their way to attend a United Nations environmental conference in Nairobi. But on March 10, 2019, just six minutes after takeoff, the flight ended in tragedy. The pilots reported they were having trouble controlling the aircraft and asked to return to the airport. Unfortunately, before they could make it back, the plane went into a steep dive and crashed near the town of Bishoftu, around 39 miles from Addis Ababa. All 157 people on board lost their lives. Investigators later found that the crash was mainly caused by a system called MCAS, an automatic feature meant to help keep the plane stable during flight. Because of a faulty sensor, the system thought the plane's nose was too high and kept forcing it downward. Even though the pilots tried to fight back against the system, they couldn't regain control. The report also showed that the system relied on just one sensor, which made it easy for something to go wrong. 
On top of that, the pilots weren't properly trained on how the system worked, and there wasn't enough information about it in the flight manual. Turkish Airlines Flight 1951 Turkish Airlines Flight 1951 was a scheduled flight from Istanbul, Turkey to Amsterdam, Netherlands on February 25, 2009. The aircraft was a Boeing 737-800, a twin-engine narrow-body jet commonly used for short to medium haul routes. It was carrying 128 passengers and 7 crew members. Amsterdam is a popular hub for both business and tourist travel, and this flight was part of Turkish Airlines' regular service connecting two major international cities. As the plane approached Amsterdam Schiphol Airport, something went seriously wrong. At an altitude of around 2,000 feet, the aircraft began to lose speed and drop too quickly. The left radio altimeter, which incorrectly reported the plane was just a few feet above the ground, mistakenly triggered the auto throttle to reduce engine thrust to idle, thinking the plane was about to land. With the engines nearly at idle and the plane descending rapidly, the crew didn't react in time to recover. The jet stalled and crashed into a muddy field just about one mile short of the runway. It broke into three parts, but miraculously, no fire broke out. Nine people died, including all three pilots, and dozens more were injured. The investigation by the Dutch Safety Board found that the faulty altimeter and the auto throttle system were the key technical failures. But pilot error also played a major role. They didn't notice the loss of airspeed in time. Fly Dubai Flight 981 Fly Dubai Flight 981 was a passenger flight from Dubai International Airport in the United Arab Emirates to Rostov Nadano Airport in southern Russia. Operated by a Boeing 737-800, the plane was carrying 55 passengers and 7 crew members. This route connected Dubai, a major international hub, with Rostov, a city important for its business ties and regional travel. As the flight neared its destination on March 19, 2016, severe weather conditions at rostov nadano made landing difficult. Strong gusting winds, low visibility, and wind shear warnings created a dangerous situation. The pilots aborted their first landing attempt and entered a holding pattern circling for nearly two hours in hopes that the weather would clear. Eventually, they tried to land a second time, but just like the first attempt, conditions were still very poor, and the crew initiated another go-around. During this second go-around, the aircraft climbed steeply but then suddenly entered a sharp nose-down descent from an altitude of about three-quarters of a mile. It crashed almost vertically into the runway at a very high speed, exploding on impact. All 62 people on board died instantly. Investigators from the Interstate Aviation Committee determined that the cause of the crash was pilot error during the go-around procedure. The captain made abrupt nose-down inputs while trying to recover from an earlier overpitch, which caused the plane to descend uncontrollably. Fatigue and high stress from the long holding time and through weather conditions also contributed. Air India Express Flight 1344 Air India Express Flight 1344 was a special flight meant to bring Indian citizens back home during the COVID-19 pandemic as part of the Vande Bharat mission. The flight took off from Dubai and was heading to Calicut International Airport in Kerala, India. On board were 190 people in total, 184 passengers and 6 crew members, all returning home during a difficult time when international travel was limited. On August 7, 2020, as the flight approached Calicut, the weather was really bad. It was raining heavily because of the monsoon season, which made visibility poor and landing tricky. The pilots first tried to land on runway 28, but had to call it off because of strong tailwinds. Then they tried again, this time on runway 10. But during this second attempt, the plane landed much further down the runway than it should have, about 3,300 feet into a runway that's 9,380 feet long. Calicut's runway is a tabletop runway, which means it's built on a hill with a steep drop at the end. Because the plane touched down too late and couldn't stop in time, it slid off the edge, fell down a slope, and broke into two pieces. Sadly, 21 people died in the crash including both pilots and over 110 others were injured. India's Aircraft Accident Investigation Bureau looked into what happened. Their report released in 2021 said that the main cause was the pilot not following proper procedures. Even though the approach wasn't stable and the co-pilot suggested they should go around for another try, the captain chose to continue the landing. The bad weather and the tricky layout of the runway also made things worse. Helios Airways Flight 522 Helios Airways Flight 522 was supposed to be a regular flight from Larnaca, Cyprus to Prague, Czech Republic with a stop in Athens, Greece. It was the morning of August 14, 2005, and there were 121 people on board. Most of them were vacationers heading home. But what began as a normal trip turned into one of the most heartbreaking and unusual plane crashes in Europe. 
The flight took off like usual, climbing steadily. But as the plane got higher, warning alarms started going off in the cockpit. One of them was a cabin altitude warning, which meant the air pressure inside the plane wasn't being maintained properly. Unfortunately, the pilots thought it was just a problem with the air conditioning system. They didn't realize the pressurization system had been left on manual mode after recent maintenance and wasn't switched back to auto. Because of that, the air inside the cabin got thinner and thinner. Slowly, everyone on board, both passenger and crew, began to lose consciousness due to lack of oxygen. It's called hypoxia, and it can make you feel sleepy and confused before you pass out completely. Even though alarms kept sounding and air traffic control tried to contact the flight, no one responded. The autopilot just kept flying the plane along its planned route. When the plane didn't answer to radio calls, Greek fighter jets were sent up to check. What they saw was chilling. The cockpit was empty, and the people inside the plane looked unconscious. Only one flight attendant had briefly regained consciousness using a portable oxygen mask and was seen trying to take control. But by then, it was far too late. Eventually, the plane ran out of fuel and crashed into the hills near Grammatico, just north of Athens. Everyone on board died. Later investigations found that the accident happened because of a chain of mistakes. The ground crew didn't reset the pressurization system, the pilots misunderstood the warning signs, and there were no backup systems to catch the error in time. UIA Flight 752 On January 8, 2020, Ukraine International Airlines Flight 752 took off from Tehran's Imam Khomeini International Airport. It was headed to Kiev, Ukraine, and had 176 people on board. Many of the passengers were students and families from countries like Iran, Canada, Sweden, Ukraine, Afghanistan, and the UK. Most of them returning home after spending the winter holidays abroad. Just a few minutes after takeoff, while the plane was still climbing and only a few miles away from the airport, it was mistakenly shot down by Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps. They fired two surface-to-air missiles. The first exploded near the cockpit, knocking out the plane's systems and communication. A few seconds later, the second missile hit, sending the aircraft out of control. It broke apart midair and crashed into the field near a village of Kalajabad. No one survived. At the time, tensions were very high in the region. Just days earlier, a U.S. drone strike had killed Iranian General Qasem Soleimani, and Iran's military was on high alert, expecting possible retaliation. Right after the crash, Iranian officials claimed it was caused by a technical issue. But after internal investigators provided evidence like radar data, satellite images, and videos, Iran admitted three days later that its military had accidentally shot down the plane. Later investigations found that a radar system had been set up incorrectly, and there was a serious lack of communication between the people operating it. The plane had been flying exactly where it was supposed to and had shown no unusual behavior. In 2023, Iran sentenced 10 people who were involved in operating the defense system, but many of the victims' families were not satisfied with the outcome saying the trial wasn't transparent and calling for a fair, international investigation to hold the right people accountable.